When we think and talk about feelings as a, a thing that comes and goes because we're human and an ongoing emotional state or, or a, a centeredness, groundedness, we often find that these two things um, need to come into balance. They need to meet in the middle. We are not our emotions. We are not anger or joy or love or fear, but we have these things or we experience these things. Likewise, um, we are not always capable of maintaining a 100% zen and neither are we able to sustain at a 100% um, adrenaline rush all of the time. We, we, are, we are built for balance and connectedness. And in this time of COVID-19, uh, some of us might be experiencing things that don't really feel normal, but we also don't really know what to do with those things. And not knowing what to do with our feelings can leave us lost, confused, overwhelmed. Um, our, our problem solving abilities sort of shrink. And for me personally, it seems like it takes a lot more energy to do fewer tasks. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit from Alexis Rockley, who's a psychology, um, a psychologist who, who specializes in coaching and, and team approach, team building. Um, and so they talk a little bit about these um, feelings of flaky or, or inconsistency. And they talk about how this is part of uh, your brain's chemical reaction. When, when your brain doesn't know what to brace for next, or there's just constant surprise happening again and again, um, your, your brain simply runs out of energy to, to find and return to calm or baseline. Maybe some of you are feeling tired all the time or just really easily tired, even though you're not necessarily doing any more or less physical activity. Uh, this is because with the state of the world, with the world's emotional response, our brains are burning energy roughly 10 times faster than they normally would because we're constantly processing information. And for people working in any sort of healthcare or essential business right now, there are procedures that are also changing. So not only are we trying to process just general information, we're trying to then apply that into our everyday interventions. And our brains are working overtime for that. Some of us are just having one heck of a time focusing, can't seem to focus, can't concentrate. And with all of this cortisol in our brains that's being ramped up from responding to the environment, our prefrontal cortex, there's a functionality in there that's sort of shutting down because again, it's being too overwhelmed. And so it's the part of our brain that helps us with daily tasks or make decisions or problem solving or planning. That part of our brain is simply shutting down because there's other activity that need to take precedence. So for, you might experience this as having sort of a writer's block or a creative block. Um, this is also a time for us where maybe we're trying to be more imaginative or reinvent interventions because we're having to do them from a distance. But maybe we're being so careful with what we're planning, but we can't seem to break through. And again, when your brain is stuck in fight, flight, or freeze, your energy is being diverted. So in, in a pre-COVID-19 context, perhaps you could sit down at your desk or in your car or um, have a moment to sort of think through and problem solve an idea. But right now, the brain's energy is constantly trying to figure out, am I in danger? Should I move? Should I sit still? What's happening? And so our brain's becoming overloaded. One thing that can also, this can also lead to if it's continual, um, or a, a continuous pattern of ours, is we might be feeling apathetic. We've used up so much energy trying to think and plan and we're stuck that maybe that slowly melts into apathy. I just don't care. I don't know when this is gonna change. I don't know how it's gonna change when it does. Why even bother? I'm not gonna plan. I'm not gonna set goals for myself or my project. I'm just, I just wash my hands of it kind of thing. Again, 
this isn't necessarily none of these none of these responses are our personal failures or our moral responses um they have no, no moral bearing on who we are this is part of what it means to exist in in this moment in time other things that she talks about some of you I know for me, some of us might be having crazy dreams. I mean, maybe you're having a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep or the opposite. Once you hit the pillow, your dreams are just out of control. And, and again, this is, this is a very common response. So one of the things that for those of us who are, are field clinicians, one of the phrasings that often comes for our charting is this idea of normalizing a situation. And this time isn't particularly normal. However, our responses are normal. So one thing that I wanted to kind of share today, one thing that I've been thinking about is what does it mean to have a normalized stress response without normalizing the stressor, right? I am an emotional creature. I can feel and I can process and I can also acknowledge that this is a roller coaster in time and it's not going to stay this way forever. And here's just one little example that I wanted to share about that. This is a jade plant. You can see it's sort of succulent type, um, but it's, it's, it's bigger than that. And this plant actually, if I can manage this, came from this giant plant. Okay, that whole thing is a jade plant. And this was actually um, my brother-in-law's grandmother's plant. She's had it for literally decades and um, over the years it, it's it's outgrown its pot so they've had to trim it back and it's been given um, repotted and given away as gifts so about a year ago I got um, this jade plant and it's already doubled in size so here's the thing about jade plants sometimes the leaves sometimes they fall off and when this started happening, I panicked because I thought I've only had this plant for a, a month and the leaves are already falling off. Am I really that good at killing houseplants? But I was told to let the leaves sit in the dirt, let it, let it settle for a little bit and just watch and see what happens. And sure enough, as I continue to water the plant, let's see, you can see it, the little, leaf actually started sprouting and growing something new. So what once was falling to the earth, what once was broken, what once seemed like it didn't belong anymore, actually turned into something else. And this this little pot actually came from the big pot and it, it grew out of one little leaf and sprouted. And I've got around around my little plant room, I've got several other pots, little seedlings. And what's funny to me is that even though the leaves fall, there's, there's no returning back to the original plant, right? I can't take this little leaf that fell and glue it back onto the original plant. There has to be something different. There's no going back to normal. There's a moving through into something that comes next. So whether you are feeling flaky or you can't focus or you're tired or you're feeling stuck or apathetic, maybe this is a time where you are falling or you are sitting in what feels like sitting in the dirt. And this is a time that we can't rush through. We can't pick ourselves up and, and repot into a new plant magically. There are things that are happening that we cannot see there are emotions that we're feeling that we cannot necessarily find a box for and put them away. But as one thing falls, that does leave the opportunity for something else to grow. As one thing fades, there is energy then for something else to be reborn. So in this time of, of COVID-19, the idea of cultivating hope isn't to isn't meant to rush anyone through any specific goal or isn't to rush through any specific to-do list. It's an invitation for you to take a moment and examine, where am I? Where are we? And maybe you haven't felt a falling yet. Maybe you still feel that you're very well connected to your, your core self, your spirit, your soul. 
whatever that is for you. And if that's you, then there's also this time to be mindful of your teammates, of your friends, of your family, of your coworkers who maybe do feel like they've fallen. However you are and wherever you are, we are in this together. We're growing at different paces. Some of us, maybe we look at our coworker and think, oh my gosh, they're so much further along than I am. But this isn't a competition. We're all in this together. So however and wherever hope shows up for you today, may you be surprised and may you find rest knowing that while this is a roller coaster, it's a roller coaster that won't last forever.